Okay, guys, it's been a while since I shot a video on this bathroom that I was doing the rock cave, and I'm going to go into that more. Right now, I'm getting ready to put the pan liner down, which I've got a bigger pan liner. So what I've done is I've made a template, which I'll show you, of the floor, and you're coming up on the floor to create the, the sides. In my case, I'm going up 11 inches, and I'll go into why and how to do that, but I'm seaming two pieces together where I'd rather not, but I've seamed a lot of liners, you know, for pools and ponds and spas. There's a way of keeping a, a liner uh, seam perfect. Uh, the, the, the manufacturer here on the thing recommends that you have temperatures that are 60 to 100. Ideally, like I'm, I heated this space up right now. I've got a, a curtain here and the walls are all drywalled pretty much. And I've got the ambient temperature up to about 80 right now in here. So this has been sitting all night in preparation. I cleaned the actual surfaces that I'm going to bond together. And I've got the ambient temperature up. The glue is warm. Everything's ideal for this to be put together. So right now, um, manufacturer recommends a two inch overlap. Ooh, I've got a, a total of five. I want a good seam and I don't want it leaking. So again, everything's clean. The other thing is I've screwed down. This is the bottom of the actual, you know, shower. This is the fold up. So what I've done is I've screwed this down here and here, and this thing doesn't move. I also have taken and have the other roll screwed down with a two by eight. And I've got this to where when I glue this, I'm flopping it over and I'm laying this down just as I go and getting it in. I've got reference marks, I've got lines to say, but right now just literally flopping this thing over, it's perfect. I see people out there, they're trying to get a liner and hold it up and put it in place. I've created a perfect scenario where it's lined up already. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this stuff down real quick, not thick, just a nice even coat, no puddling, and then let it off gas. Uh, in this temperature right now, you know, a minute to three minutes would be ideal to let it off gas. It's almost that it's it's dry. And it, a lot of people want to put wet to wet. I see the guys on YouTube literally wet on wet and they don't let it off gas. That's a bad bond. So watch me as we go. We'll run through this real quick. I've also taken the time to vigorously shake up the, uh, the glue. You don't want to just open it up and start using it just as is. And the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to paint a little and then come over here and do this one. So I'm getting this is where I'm going to start putting it together right up this end. So I don't want to run all the way down and then come back to this one because this glue will be in a different state than this glue. They're going to start off gassing immediately. And because of that, I want the glue to be at the same timing as I go down this sheet. And I'm rubbing it in. The other thing I failed to mention to you is I have sanded this with a number 50 sandpaper or 40, I think it was. I've sanded it to make it roughened up before I cleaned it. I'm looking for a chemical bond in cleaning this, obviously, but by making a, a sandpapered uh, scratch, I'm creating a mechanical bond, which enhances the chemical bond. Now at this temperature, it probably won't even take a minute or so for this glue to be drying, off-gassing enough. So by the time I'm done painting, because this is a seven foot, uh, actually it's 7.5 feet of a surface area, and it, this glue is going to set up pretty quick in this temperature. I'm looking for a good bond and a, a decent cure. I don't want to wait 12 years for a, a curing to put this thing into work, because I'll leave it set overnight at least, basically a 24 hour period before I put it into service. And even then, it's not getting water because I'm not going to test it just yet. Again, on this outside edge here that I started with, 
If you put your finger on it now, it's tacky, it's drying. This that I just did down there is still pretty wet, but you want it to off gas, to dry a little bit, almost to where it's perfectly dry and then put it together. The other thing is to roll it out. Really put some pressure down on it to get the two pieces uniformly com 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 contact contacted with one another. So even what I just put down is, is still a little wet, but you don't want to wait too long. That looks like I'm, uh, I'm going. So I'm going to keep this elevated a little and start to drop this and roll this immediately. The other thing I like to do is to come by right on this seam area. This is in the actual shower. So I'll just layer a little bit on the edge, just as like a ceiling, almost like a caulking. It doesn't need it, but it's extra. In my case, it'll be guaranteed to not, this is the access point right here of any leak, is that edge. So it's almost like a caulking, as I'm saying. But I, I guarantee you, if you had this at your place there and you tried to pull apart the seam right here, you couldn't do it after it's cured, obviously. That's that, boys. All right, I'll be back to you in a bit. Okay, I just wanted to kind of give you an overview. This is the template that I took of the actual floor of the shower. And if you'll notice, all the way around it is 11 inches where that's gonna come up on the side walls of the shower. This area right here is the dam, and I am missing a little piece here. I cut this one a little bit shy, but it, it goes up and over and then starts to go down the dam on the outside, so I've got protection here. But what I'm about to do right now is to go ahead and show you a step that most of you don't do, which I like to do. I'm just anal about things. So I'm gonna show you some marks here that I've laid out for what I call the folds. This is a 90 degree angle here. And what I'm trying to do is, is, is basically this. If you take this layout here of this actual corner, you're gonna have three lines, four really. You've got these three, which are fold, and then this one's a fold for me, that when I get done, it's, this is gonna be flat all up on here. So if we look at this, the first fold is obviously gonna be like this. When I get done, my whole thing's going to be folded over right to this corner, flat as a pancake. I could also make it to where it was upright, but just taking these two, folding them together, and then making, I guess your first thing is you're going to make this little wing out here. And I glue these two together, and that keeps them nice and flat. Then I'll fold it over here, and I'll glue this intersection here. Now, I could actually take this and leave it vertical, but it'd sag a little. You know, this, this runway here is not too long, but it would still fold over. So when I go to move this, I make one more fold that you all probably don't, and that is, so I'm going to do this. This is glued. Oh, fold it there, and then I'll fold it one more time, and it'll be flat when I go to move it. I'm going to fold it. You'll see, what I'm going to do is I'm going to iron all of these junctions, and they're all written out, and then I'll fold it one more time, and it'll be flat with a little jig that I made, and I even have them on the back. You'll see, what I'm going to do is all of these junctions, and they're all So this line right here, I'm going to address on the back. Well, I can't see it with a little jig that I made, and I even have them on the back, because some of the iron I'm going to do is on the back. My 90 degree corners. Next, I'm going to show you my 45. Well, Using this little illustration, it's different than a 90. This is actually a 45 degree angle, but I've got my lines all drawn out on this as well as, as I said, on the back as well, so that I can fold whichever way I need to. This particular line right here is where I'm going to be cutting after all this is seen together, folded and glued. This would be where I would cut my dam to go up and over. And this will continue to stand upright, but there'll be a small corner right here. So anyway, 
This again gets folded with the first being here. This is glued. And then from there, this is then glued into this way. So you actually have the perfect standing corner. But then I take it one more step and I fold this over to begin with. That gets folded over. Because I want this flat as a pancake, remember. And then from there, I make one more fold right here. So my, my, when I go to move this, all my, my, my vertical uh, lap is, is laying flat. I'm going to pick it up. So again, I've chosen 11 it, inches. It's my damn nail right here is six. Whichever inch way I'm going to do it, rock. I haven't figured that out yet. And that gives me a five inch orange all, all the way around this. I'm going to have that sitting my, up perfectly. My waterproofing is going to go down below in that. The corner. Right. I've and made this a lot higher than most of you would, but uh, I'm like not going to be sitting here. in here trying so again, to I've chosen fix, 11 you know, inches. On my damn right here is full system and is going to bulge rock. out. I'm going to have and my that gives me a five inch. Okay, I'm just gonna hold those off for a, about a minute. And then I'm gonna sandwich these two pieces together. That's gonna give me my first glue joint. Okay, I see my line on the back here. It's already, and now literally, and you got your roller. Okay, another five minutes gone by. It's tacky, it's not wet anywhere. And that's key to having this do what you want it to do. So you get it lined up and real quick like, let's give it a good roll. Okay, as you can see right here, I got the shower pan liner all ready to install. When I go to move it, it's already folded and glued the, uh, the flaps, it's all ready to go and it's nicely flat and it's easy to pick up. There's no wrestling here. This shape fits exactly the actual floor itself precisely. It is perfect to the floor of that interior. And now it's just a matter of folding up the flaps and screwing them with a fender washer and a drywall screw. So I'm going to show that now. So the liner neatly, you don't have to try and fuss with it. It's right easy to center this thing, which when you have it in an unseamed, you know, when you don't take the time that I've taken, you're going to have a little more uh, difficulty. You have to get it centered. Mine, I just drop it right in. Put your insert piece over. Put your bolts in and we'll tighten it down and that'll that'll be a, a permanent seal right there where the drain is. I've got some great foam here, which is a great adhesive. So we put it down, we lay the mat in it, we pull it back, we let it sit for a few minutes. Now, Now, we'll just roll it into it. Now, pull it back and let it sit for a bit. And then we'll be back with you. Okay, so again, touching this, there's nothing on the finger and it's sticky. So we just start literally rolling it down Again, both of these surfaces have been sprayed, pushed together, and they're just now where you can touch it and nothing's on your finger. That's the key for wanting, wanting to get after it. So let's see if we can't do just that. I probably...
in. I'm doing that right now. Now, again, this could probably set just a little bit longer. It's still going to work. Just fine. Now again, I'm going to screw this as well, which I don't really need to. It's a redundancy, but that's just how I like to roll. Ah, you got a little wrinkle there. Okay, so looking around now, again, this fold right here, a lot of times when you take a liner, it wants to roll there. It doesn't want to lay into the 90 degree corner like this one does. This is just literally glued to the foam, which is stapled to the wood. And I'm gonna go by and like I say, every eight inches, get into the stud and the blocks that are here. I've got them all the way around here. No screws, obviously. On the other side at the bottom, I might put some. But uh, starting here again, but this is all nicely flattened.